A film you can explain in words is not a real film. Often to understand, we have to look into emptiness. Life should be taken ironically, otherwise, it becomes a tragedy. A film that can be described in words is not really a film. When I am shooting a film I never think of how I want to shoot something. I simply shoot it. A man who renounces something is also a man who believes in something. The script is simply a series of notes for the film. I can't imagine love without a sexual charge. After you've learned two or three basic rules of cinema grammar, you can do what you like, including breaking those rules. I always mistrust everything I see, which an image shows me, because I imagine what is beyond it. And what is beyond an image cannot be known. I think people talk too much, that's the truth of the matter. I do. I don't believe in words. People use too many words and usually wrongly. I am sure that in the distant future people will talk much less and in a more essential way. If people talk a lot less, they will be happier. Don't ask me why. The photographer in Blow Up, who is not a philosopher, wants to see things closer up. But it so happens that, by enlarging too far, the object itself decomposes and disappears. Hence there's a moment in which we grasp reality, but then the moment passes. This was in part the meaning of blow up. We know that behind every image revealed there is another image more faithful to reality, and in the back of that image there is another, and yet another behind the last one, and so on, up to the true image of that absolute, mysterious reality that no one will ever see. A woman's sex appeal is an inner matter. It stems from her mental makeup, basically. It's an attitude, not just a question of her physical features, that arrogant quality in a woman's femininity. Otherwise, all beautiful women would have sex appeal, which is not so. Fitzgerald said a very interesting thing in his diary, that human life proceeds from the good to the less good, that is, it's always worse as you go on. That's true. I read somewhere that happiness is like the bluebird of Maeterlinck, try to catch it and it loses its color. It's like trying to hold water in your hands. The more you squeeze it, the more the water runs away. When I see nature, when I look into the sky, the dawn, the sun, the colors of insects, snow crystals, the night stars, I don't feel a need for God. Perhaps when I can no longer look and wonder, when I believe in nothing, then, perhaps, I might need something else. But I don't know what. A scene has to have a rhythm of its own, a structure of its own. All I know is that we are loaded down with old and stale stuff, habits, customs, old attitudes already dead and gone. Scientific man is already on the moon, and yet we are still living with the moral concepts of Homer. Do you really think a man must be strong, masculine, dominating, and the woman frail, obedient, and sensitive? 
This is a conventional idea. Reality is quite different. If an actor tries to understand too much, he will act in an intellectual and unnatural manner. I can't give any absolute definition of what love is, or even whether it ought to exist. The way I relax, what I like doing most, is watching. That's why I like traveling, to have new things before my eyes, even a new face. I enjoy myself like that and can stay for hours, looking at things, people, scenery. The greatest danger for those working in the cinema is the extraordinary possibility it offers for lying. When a scene is being shot, it is very difficult to know what one wants it to say, and even if one does know, there is always a difference between what one has in mind and the result on film. There's much talk about the problems of youth, but young people are not a problem. It's a natural evolution of things. We, who have known only how to make war and slaughter people, have no right to judge them, nor can we teach them anything. Today we no longer know what to call art, what its function is and even less what function it will have in the future. We know only that it is something dynamic, unlike many ideas that have governed us. There can be no censorship better than one's own conscience. It's untrue to say the colors I use are not those of reality. They are real, the red I use is red, the green, green, blue, blue, and yellow, yellow. It's a matter of arranging them differently from the way I find them, but they are always real colors. So it's not true that when I tint a road or a wall, they become unreal. They stay real, though colored differently for my scene. The public buys art, but the word is drained of its meaning. Nothing regarding man is ever inhuman. That's why I make films, not ice boxes. I meant exactly what I said that we are saddled with a culture that hasn't advanced as far as science. You know what I would like to do, make a film with actors standing in empty space so that the spectator would have to imagine the background of the characters. I rarely feel the desire to reread a scene the day before the shooting. Sometimes I arrive at the place where the work is to be done and I do not even know what I am going to shoot. This is the system I prefer, to arrive at the moment when shooting is about to begin, absolutely unprepared, virgin. I often ask to be left alone on the spot for 15 minutes or half an hour and I let my thoughts wander freely. My work is like digging, it's archaeological research among the arid materials of our times. That's how I understand my first films, and that's what I'm still doing. Hollywood is like being nowhere and talking to nobody about nothing. Ingmar Bergman is a long way from me, but I admire him. He, too concentrates a great deal on individuals, and although the individual is what interests him most, we are very far apart. His individuals are very different from mine, his problems are different from mine, but he's a great director. So is Fellini, for that matter. Reality has a quality of freedom about it that is hard to explain. When man becomes reconciled to nature, when space becomes his true background, these words and concepts will have lost their meaning, and we will no longer have to use them.
We live in a society that compels us to go on using these concepts, and we no longer know what they mean. The struggle for life is not only the material and economic one. Comfort is no protection from anxiety.